Before Elon Musk was busy spreading Nazi conspiracy theories on Twitter, he was hard at work designing the vehicle of the future. The Tesla Cybertruck, a cyberpunk-themed rolling stock laughing out of the Tesla factory. No way, the other way around. Haters might say things like, it looks like a stupid boomer's idea of the future, or this is a horribly unsafe vehicle with sharp edges that isn't even good at being a pickup truck, but my god, is it a marvel of engineering. The Cybertruck is chock full of never-before-seen innovations coming from Musk himself, who promised to a man on Mars by 2021. The windshield wiper. Tesla patented two revolutionary innovations for this, a horizontal-only electromagnetic wiper and one based on laser technology. Fast forward to release day and it's a regular wiper, but bigger. Elon Musk does it again. The exoskeleton body. It basically means the truck is cast as one big, single piece and the side panels and the like are part of the car's actual load-bearing structure as opposed to just hanging the panels on a unibody frame. This leads to a more durable structure and, most importantly, significantly lower weight, which is a huge deal with large electric pickups. An exoskeleton instead of a conventional unibody is one of the main innovations of the Cybertruck. Well, it was until they scrapped the idea and went back to a traditional unibody instead. Throttle House, a car-themed YouTube channel for divorced men, actually got to review the Cybertruck by driving it for 500 miles. Their video is concerning, to say the least, in terms of the details we learn about the Cybertruck. The headlights are pointing upward, blinding oncoming drivers instead of shining on the road. The rear camera stops working at night. When closing the door, the entire car vibrates. Okay. Everything really vibrates. Yeah, everything vibrates. Like we developed a new material. We called it vibranium. The driver's field of view is a major hazard. The interior is very cheap and creaky. The ride is also rather bumpy. <laughs> There are no gauges on the dashboard or stalks on the wheel, so you always have to look to the right at the touchscreen for everything. And then there is my personal favorite. What surely, if I just do my fingers? Surely well, this no. will stop. Oh! Hold on, it gets better. Four carrots in one go. Yeah. Which is a whole hand. Yeah. It's a whole hand. Three. Yeah, definitely the hand of a child, but I think it would take off the fingers of a full grown adult. But wait, the car also has a vegetable peeler feature. Oh my god. That's just the edge of the door. Vegetable prep. Now that's what I call quality engineering. All for the low, low price of 40,000 Tesla dollars, also known as 61,000 US dollars, for the plain base model. Oh, but who am I to judge an unexpected 52.5% or $21,000 price increase? After all, Elon Musk knows more about manufacturing than anyone else on Earth. At this point, I think I know more about manufacturing than anyone currently alive on Earth. Which really showed during the 2023 third quarter investor call. The Cybertruck is also gigantic. You know those needlessly huge pickup trucks? The ones that in Europe only trashy yet affluent assholes drive? Yeah, those ones. Like the Ford F-150. This version is called Super Groove 5.5 Raptor because it's marketed towards divorced middle-aged men who think they're a modern-day Clint Eastwood or something. They aren't. Look at how unnecessarily huge the F-150 is. This will surely attract their daughter's 17-year-old best friend. Well, the Cybertruck is even bigger. 8 centimeters wider at 2.2 meters, which is half a meter wider than a regular car. And for this gargantuan size you get basically no storage space. Look at that, you can't even fit in a regular sized bicycle. On this pickup truck, it has about the same bed size as this Subaru Sambar, a micro truck compared to this 3-ton monstrosity. Also in terms of range, the Cybertruck is pretty disappointing. The guys at Throttle House managed to get 462 kilometers out of it on a full charge while driving it down from an elevation of 610 meters to sea level. So a pretty advantageous trip in terms of getting range out of your car. But their 462 kilometers is still 53 kilometers less than the advertised 515 kilometers range and 342 kilometers less than the original range promised by Musk back then, which was 804 kilometers or 500 miles. That was the promised range for the type these guys got to try, which is the biggest, meanest version of the Cybertruck with the longest range called the Cyber Beast. So named because Elon Musk himself is a divorced dad. Also, have you ever wondered why we don't build cars with untreated stainless steel exterior? Would you like to guess why we put multiple protective layers on the metal panels covering our vehicles? Is it just for fun? Or is there something outside the showroom which warrants such protective layers? Mr. Musk, Mr. Billionaire Genius Vibranium Neuralink Tesla Mars 420 Jewish Question Rocket Man. May I present to you the concept of weather.
So yeah, the Cybertruck is prone to rusting. As to how to prevent that, according to the official manual, immediately remove bird droppings, tree sap, grease, oil, tar, road salt and dead insects, otherwise they'll stay in your car. Do not use hot water during washing because it can stay in your car. Do not use certain car shampoos because they can stay in your car. And do not wash your car in direct sunlight because it can stay in your car. Unsurprisingly, multiple Cybertruck owners began reporting rusty stains on their vehicles almost immediately, some of them after just 11 days. But hey, thankfully Tesla can put a protective layer on your Cybertruck after all. That would be $5,000 extra please. <laughs> If this video so far has convinced you to buy a Cybertruck, first off, I'm sure your caretaker will love hearing all about your little plans. Second, get ready for an apparent wait time of 13 years. Because according to Tesla, 2 million people put down the deposit, with the current rate of production being about 150,000 Cybertrucks per year. Theoretically, anyway. Now, to be fair, the rate will increase to a maximum of 250,000 per year, according to Musk. If they could magically get to that number tomorrow, that would mean a mere 8 year wait time for your Cybertruck if you put down the money today. At this point, I think I know more about manufacturing than anyone currently alive on Earth. But aside from the ridiculous engineering, the disastrous tech solutions, and the fact that the vehicle looks extremely stupid, the Cybertruck has a bigger, more fundamental issue. Namely, who is this thing really for? Who are the target consumer group? The Peugeot 308 is for regular people who want to get around. The Cadillac Escalade is for people terrified of minorities. The Dodge Ram and the Ford F-150 are for divorced dads fantasizing about their daughter's underage best friend. The Cybertruck? Let's see. A 61 to $100,000 pickup truck marketed with nuclear explosions resistant windows, wait never mind, and steel side panels that can stop arrows and also bullets, all wrapped in a weird, cringy, nerdy science fiction aesthetic. So your target buyer is someone who is affluent, a sci-fi nerd and a doomsday prepper. And so question, how many affluent sci-fi nerd doomsday preppers have you met before? I'm sure there are some, but does this demographic warrant taking four years of development time away from Tesla and occupying production lines to churn out Cybertrucks instead of regular models? Tesla's latest model, the Model Y is now half a decade old. Why not focus on that and the others instead? The cars people actually want as opposed to a PlayStation 1 game vehicle for tech fetishist dipshits with too much disposable income. I think I know the reason why. The whole Cybertruck affair screams Elon Musk pet project to me. Namely, Musk just showed up one day to the office and was like, here's this th thing I, I d d drew on to 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 toilet paper now, uh, may 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 make it into a, a, a epic sci-fi truck. Also, I, I ripped out this thing well, tripping on ketamine, you'll, you'll have to fix that too. And so the engineers got on the job, having to work within the limitations of Musk's stupid idea, unable to change the car fundamentally. If this was indeed the case, it would explain all the stupid solutions within and without. Borderline hazardous driver's field of view cannot be fixed, the boss wants this exact car shape. Gauges behind the steering wheel for quick and safe information access? Nope, sorry, the boss wants just one big screen on the dashboard. Sure, putting untreated stainless steel panels on a vehicle is a very impractical idea and fitting them to together correctly is basically impossible, plus you have to wipe your entire car constantly with window cleaner apparently, otherwise it'll get stained, but Elon Musk said stainless steel panels, so it has to be that way. By the way, the Cybertruck steel panels aren't even bulletproof. I know this because Aiden Ross tried shooting at it. Aiden Ross is a Cybertruck owner, as if the car needed any more bad press. If you don't know who Aiden Ross is, good for you. The Twitch first why the biggest dick in the world. Obviously I'm top G. You know girls don't like big dicks, right? Shut up and listen. So they shot at his Cybertruck and, surprise, it's not actually bulletproof. The steel just breaks under the impact and collapses inward. It's probably already broken. No, it wasn't, dude. It was not already broken, bro. Uh, yo, Elon, I need a new truck, please, bro. No, no, shut up. Elon, Elon, listen, bro. I need a new truck. Elon, please, I need a new truck, bro. So, okay, the Cybertruck might not be the best vehicle in terms of all of its characteristics, but at least it has a cool camping setup, right? The Cybertruck Base Camp. Wow, that place looks totally like the one Star Wars planet with the big trees where they did the speeder chase thing. With the Base Camp, you'll feel like a galactic pioneer camping on strange new worlds or something. In your sleek, angular sci-fi tent, here's what the Base Camp actually looks like. Congratulations, your Cybertruck has a butthole now. For the low price of $3,000. Do you have any idea what kind of a tent you can buy for $3,000? Practically a pop-up house. Why not buy that instead and carry it on the bed of your, you know, pickup truck? 
With that, let's talk about the overarching ideology behind the Cybertruck. It's an ultra-expensive doomsday vehicle with sharp hazardous angles, massive weight, and lights that bind everyone else who isn't driving a literal tank on the road. As Musk himself put it, if you are in an argument with another car, you will win. And so, a core part of the cyberpunk genre on which the Cybertruck is based is it being set in a dystopian, high-tech future where the rich are above the law, corporations are more powerful than governments, and anyone not part of the ruling class is left to fend for themselves. The Cybertruck matches this dystopian way of thinking rather well. It is fundamentally designed for one thing and one thing only, to overpower and bull over everyone else on the road. Regular people who cannot afford $100,000 armored monstrosities to keep them safe from those who can. This is the future Elon Musk wants. The future we're headed towards right now, unless we come up with an alternative. What a disaster. There are almost no positives about the Cybertruck. Even the Throttle House guys seemingly had to invent reasons to like it to try and cram more positive things into their video. And the backseat passengers get to enjoy YouTube, Netflix, Twitch. Yeah. And so do we. And that was kind of, and that's not new to this car. No. You know, obviously even like other Teslas like the Model S have it, but it, but was, it works really well. It's just fun. It's it's easy, it's bright, it's sharp, it's it's quick to respond, it does what you want. Wow, the, the screens, they're, they're high resolution and you can touch them and they react. Functioning touch screens in a $100,000 car. We're definitely putting that in our review. In their end summary, the only positives they could say about the Cybertruck is that it handles well, that people look at it, it's fun to kick it, and that it's cool how Tesla had the balls to make something this stupid to begin with. What a perfect indictment of this stainless steel trash fire. At this point, the most entertaining thing about the Cybertruck is watching Tesla fanboys struggle with the sunk cost fallacy, doing their best to pretend that the vehicle they shelled out $61 to $100,000 for is not a badly designed, ridiculous looking, low quality piece of shit. From a man currently spreading the great replacement not a conspiracy theory on his failing social media platform. Days after launch, you're sitting at a red light. The novelty is gone, and you're not any happier. Maybe it's your imagination, but the gaps in the door look off. You think you saw a car full of teens laughing at you earlier. You are now $100,000 in debt for a meme, and you feel nothing. So, this is a Tesla. 